Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of 7 Minute AE Tutorials where you learn tips, tricks, and shortcuts in 7 minutes or less. No BS, just AE. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create these cool flashing party lights. We'll be using shape layers, adding expressions, parenting layers, and a lot more. So you'll learn quite a bit over the next 7 minutes. There's a lot to get to, so let's dive right in. Okay, so I'm going to make my comp size. 1080 by 1080. You can make this project any size you want, frame rate, whatever you want, and let's just call this party lights. Okay, so once we have our comp created, let's right click in this area down here and choose new shape layer, add an ellipse, and add a fill. And this fill can be any color you like. Let's make this ellipse size 50. Then we're gonna go to effect, stylize, and add a glow. For our glow settings, let's put the composite original on top. Bring down our threshold all the way, make the glow radius uh, 125, and our glow intensity 2.5. So now let's uh, click T for opacity, and we're going to bring this down to 50%. So now holding down the Option button on a Mac and clicking Opacity, we're going to type the expression Wiggle 445. So the 4 represents how fast this is going to affect our opacity, and the 45 is the amount. Let's go ahead and stop this at like 5 seconds. If you click in to bring over your handles, right click and choose Trim Comp to Work Path. Click P for position and move this over to 30. So it goes to the far left. Then lastly, we want to make this layer 3D and enable our motion blur. One more thing for glow, let's, uh, if you click on your fill up here and just copy this hex code, Command C, and then go to the colors in our glow settings and make both of those the same exact color and then change original colors under glow colors to A and B colors. That way our glow is gonna be the same as our ellipse. We're going to be duplicating this layer a number of times, and then we're going to pre-comp this and then duplicate the pre-comp. So it's really important to get these settings correct at this point. Otherwise, you'll be going back and spending a lot of time making uh, alterations. With this layer selected, we want to duplicate this. Command D. Just in case we want to change our settings later on, if we open up our ellipse path on both of these layers, you want to take the ellipse path size of your second layer and just parent that to the ellipse path size of your first layer. See, if we move this over a little bit, in case you want to change your size later on, whatever size you make your first one, your second one will follow. And as we duplicate these, the expression will follow this layer. So the size alteration you make of your first shape layer will affect all subsequent layers. Uh, we're going to separate these circles by 60 pixels. So P for position, this is 30. P for position here, plus 60 would be 90. And then we're going to make a total of 18 layers. So let's just Command D until we get to 18. We want to offset all of these by 60 pixels. So we just let's go through each one of these and add 60 to the previous layer. So 90 plus 60 is 150, 210, 270, 330, 390, 450, 510, 570, 630, 690, 750, 810, 870, 930, 990, and 1050. We have the same expression on all of these layers, yet they are blinking at random times. And the reason why is because the way a wiggle expression works is it takes the values that you've put in and it applies them randomly. So the next thing we need to do is we need to offset all of these layers by one frame. Command A to grab all of them. And on your first frame here, click Option, right bracket to make everything one frame. Layer one is on our far left. Layer 18 is on our far right. So if we want these circles to animate from the left to right, you have to choose the first layer because when you sequence layers, which is what we're about to do, the order in which you select the layers determines which ones come on first. So let's highlight layer one, hold down shift and click all the way down to layer 18. Then right click on any one of these layers, choose keyframe assistant, sequence layers, you want to make sure you do not click overlap, so click OK. And now you can see how this is staggered out. Come down to our last frame and click Option right bracket, and it pulls all of them over. So now, if we preview this, you can see how they animate in from left to right. Hit Command Z, and we'll do this again, but we'll go from bottom to top. So select 18 first, and then one last, and make sure you're on your first frame here. Option right bracket to make it one frame. Right click anywhere in here. Keyframe Assistant sequence layers do not choose overlap and as you can see it staggers it from bottom to top come down to the very end of your comp and option right bracket and now it comes in from right to left okay so this comp is going to be our source comp for our party lights so uh, with all of these selected command shift c to pre-compose and let's call this lights source hit return and so now here's our pre-comp for our 
party lights. Okay, so now with this layer selected, we're going to click continuously rasterize. And the reason why is because we're going to have this layer uh, sometimes it's gonna be smaller than the width of our comp. In order to preserve the glow, we wanna make sure it's continuously rasterized. So you can see it cuts off if you don't do that. And also since shape layers are vector images, you can make these as large or as small as you want. As long as it's continuously rasterized is selected, you won't lose the quality. See if we uncheck that, you can see how you start to see these edges around the circle. So let's get this back to 100%. Okay, so let's duplicate this layer, go to the second layer, and we're gonna to go to effect blur, directional blur. Let's make this angle 45 degrees and the blur length 130. If you just hide this first layer, you can see that's what our background layer looks like right there. With both of these highlighted, we're gonna change the track mode to add. And we're gonna pre-compose these two layers. So Command Shift C and call this lights pre-comp. Again, let's continuously rasterize this, make this 3D as well. Let's go to effect, generate fill, and make this any color you want, so like a green. And then let's just make multiple copies of this layer. Highlight all of these, click P for position, and you just wanna move these in random places. At the same time, you also wanna change this fill for all of these layers, just to give them something a little bit different. You can offset some of these in Z space. Say, so let's take uh, maybe the second, third, and fifth layer. Right click, choose transform, and flip horizontal. That would just reverse the side that these enter on. And then let's go to the beginning of the layers, select all. Let's put a keyframe for position. Go maybe three seconds. Just kind of randomly move these left and right. And then once you have that, let's even offset these layers by a few frames so they come in a little bit differently. Now these are all 3D layers, so let's go ahead and add a camera. So new layer, new camera. And then let's add a null object, layer new null. Let's make this null 3D. Change the name of the null to camera controller. Then we're going to parent our camera to this null object. So now this camera controller is going to be what controls the camera. Well, let's put a keyframe at the beginning here and then just go to maybe three seconds and put another keyframe. Uh, let's say if we go to the first one, we're going to kind of push in a little bit. So basically we're going to be pulling out. Duplicate that. Let's make one more of these. And let's change this fill to something else. Let's right click, transform, flip this horizontally. You add a keyframe, click position, and pull this back so it's really, really large. It's closer to us in Z space. Move it down a little bit. Now let's get rid of this keyframe. And then we can even like lower the opacity on this layer. T for opacity, maybe make this like 50%. And you can do this with other layers too. You can make some of these different opacities. Just something to kind of give it more variation. I hope this helped you out. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.